Okay. Hey, Mila, how are you going? Hi, Michael. I'm good. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, that's great. Well, look, I'm, I'm introducing you. You're one of my early birds in terms of doing these uh, business profiling uh, chats. Uh, and for the audience uh, that are listening to this, uh, Mila, a couple of things about Mila that I can share with you. Mila is the owner of a couple of businesses. One is called Flow CRM Hub, uh, and the other one is Just Marketing, I think. Is that correct? That's right, yes. Yeah. And they each do different aspects in the digital and online space. And I know Mila, not only is she a member of my um, networking group, BNI Networking Group in Williamstown, uh, which she joined last year, uh, but she is also doing my CRM system, my client relationship management system. And uh, I had already decided on using Zoho and then Mila comes along and guess what? She's a specialist in Zoho. So <laughs> it was a good fit. Uh, so when she wanted to join our chapter, it just made a lot of sense. So Mila, um, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, in this profile, you and your business. And I always like to start off with a question is what made you decide to get into the business you're in today? Oh, wow. Uh, for me, it's a big question. So I am originally from Brazil, I came to Australia about 11 years ago. And uh, my, uh, my focus when I came here was to become a business owner again, because I already came from a family of small business owners back in brazil we own a printing company so it just made sense to you know keep going with why i already knew how to do it uh, funny enough i was actually bullied in my first and second full-time job in sydney so all i wanted to do is to go back to where i i was feeling the most comfortable which was having my own business and that's what i did Wow, wow. So that's roughly 11 years ago. So you'd been in Sydney for a couple of years before you decided to branch out on your own? That's right. So um, two years after I landed in Australia and uh, when I finally got the visa, uh, the permanent visa, then I started Just Marketing, which is a marketing, um, digital marketing agency. And then about four and a half years ago, I moved to Melbourne and I started Flow CRM Hub, which is focusing on systems and automation. Okay, what made you decide to get into that? What was the driver behind that for you? Um, I really have a passion for small businesses and I do believe that uh, not only digital marketing, but systems and how to work better should be available to business owners. And it doesn't really matter the budget, you still should be able to find a solution or someone um, to help you implement that. So I've been implementing systems for a long time. It was never uh, something that I pushed to my business. I was just offering, um, you know, on the back side, I guess, on the, on the, um, on the back end. And I've decided just to really make the highlight and I've turned into a business, a yep. full, completely new business. Well, that's an interesting thing because that whole area of CRM um, is such a, a growth area these days because people are looking for that competitive advantage. Um, and one area is in how do I utilise my database and how do I maximise the efficiency and effectiveness of my database and my clients. And I think... I'm going to extend that just a little bit further and say that the, the modern day concept of CRM goes beyond just a database for mailing purposes, or, although most people who do use a CRM would, would think of it in that context. Because you're thinking of it more in how it integrates into your total operational system uh, and the other parts of your business. Yes, that's correct. So um, there are a lot of options nowadays on the internet. If you search CRM for small business, you're going to see a whole variety of options. And it's very confusing uh, and scary to pick one, right? Uh, most of the CRMs, they do offer focusing on sales and marketing. Some of them just merely sales. 
which is great, still very good and, and insightful to keep your data in one place. But if you are really looking at um, a better solution, I do recommend research a little bit better and go for a solution that is going to give you more flexibility and it's, and that can grow with your company moving forward. So you can actually integrate your whole invoicing, accounting operations, project management, sales, marketing, um, the whole company, every single aspect and department of your company, you can have it in one platform. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing where I think change has changed a lot probably since I started looking at CRMs, well, probably 10 years ago. Um, and I know when I made the choice, when I finally made the choice to look at Zoho, I'd been through a couple of iterations. So I'd been, when I was a very small business owner, early on I looked at salesforce.com and I then migrated to Infusionsoft, which were, that was great for a small team um, at that time. But then I, I then researched it again when I went out, was looking at my own business um, and, I, and I, the partners I had, I, I didn't have in this current business iteration. And I looked at it and exactly that process I went through because I researched CRMs and I probably shortlisted down to about five or six out of about 30 that I had researched. <laughs> and I just couldn't choose. I just couldn't do it. And I remember I went to speak to a guy um, who I met somewhere, probably could have been through BNI, I'm not sure, in another chapter. And I said to him, I said, look, I'm down to five or six. I said, I really have no basis to choose one over the other. And, I, and I'm sick of researching. I've done enough research. Yeah. <laughs> I said, this is my business. This is what I want to do. Who should I go with? And I said, what you tell me is what I'm going to go with. And he said, I'd go with Zoho. I said, done. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> and that was it's very that. tricky, isn't it? It's very, very tricky to go online and just do your research because at the end of the day, all you can see, it's not the actual platform, it's what they tell you that the platform does for you, yep. right? Yep. And in my opinion, it doesn't really matter uh, the name of the platform that you go with but first of all you need to decide what do you want that platform to do for you right and another thing that you need to understand uh, or business owners needs to understand is that a good platform a good crm software um, is that one that has enough flexibility that you actually are in control of the data right that you know exactly what the uh, data will do for you you know exactly how the data is going to behave on the back end of the system and the reports that are going to you know generate from that because a lot of platforms you start inputting data and you're completely lost you don't know you know what this piece of data where did it go to uh, you know where is where, where can i um, have the reports how do i re generate the reports that are actually going to be um, valuable to my business not to the to whatever the system wants me to do, but what is valuable for my for my business? Do you know what I mean? So, so that's the whole difference. Um, you might be using Zoho, and an architect might be using Zoho, but they they should be completely different implementations. Mm -hmm. So the whole point of have of having a system is actually the ability to customize and make sure that the platform is going to fit your business, not mine, not someone else's, yours. Yeah, okay. yeah that's good. Well, that's great. And I think we're, you know, as we're, we certainly as I'm going along, I'm learning a lot more. And, um, and I suppose I'm going to ask you a question now. What is, what's something that you've learned along the way that you reckon is a good, something good for, other people going into business or other business owners, what's the one thing that you've learned along the way that you reckon oh, this is worth sharing? Um, I think it's really understanding how to put all the pieces together for me it was a massive learning in the, in the past few years. Uh, being, um, you know, coming from a digital marketing world and perspective, um, it's not only about generating the leads and knowing how to make your marketing work, but it's also understanding the customer journey and bringing that up 
in your CRM, making the most out of the use of the platform that you're using. Even if you're not using a CRM just yet, but learning how to use your email and your Zoom now and you know, how those platforms and apps connect to each other on the back end, it's, very, it's, a, it's a game changer, to be honest, because it saves me a lot of time. Um, it's understanding how those platforms can actually help my productivity and, and to make my business more effective. It, it just changed the whole lot. Yeah, and that's one of the things these days I think is, as business owners, it's about getting the most bang for your buck out of each day and not getting stressed by the, the small stuff that you, have, you know, that you can get caught up on. Um, and just yeah. having a process in place that does that. Yeah, no yeah definitely. Like a lot of people are paying for, um, for email, for example, even if you are with Microsoft or with Gmail, it doesn't matter which one of them, they both offer a whole bunch of space that you can actually utilize instead of being paying for a Dropbox. Mm -hmm. So it's understanding what you're getting when you're signing up for a system, for a program, for an application, for software, understanding what they, what you're getting from it avoids you to be double paying just because everybody's talking about, you know, Dropbox or, or something else. Yeah, yeah, well, there's a lot of that around. And, yeah. and, I, and I love those platforms and I love those apps. I, I use all of them, but uh, the more I, I learn and the more I become an expert in, um, in different ways, the more I can say, right, um, I can actually minimize and save some money here if I do that, you know, if I connect those apps together. So, yeah, very interesting. Good. Okay, so is there something either you've read, a book, or an author, or it could be, um, could be a, a training program you've done, or it could be a networking group, doesn't matter. Is there something um, that you would highly recommend to someone who is going into business? Hmm, tricky one. For me, I recommend actually meditation. Yep. Because we get caught up in our daily uh, tasks and sometimes we get stressed or too or worrying too much about this or about that, you know. When you're a business owner, you, you need to understand that you're going through the goods and the bads and sometimes the market's not so, so good. Um, and it's really when you have to understand the power of meditation and finding yourself, um, your balance. So you can have a good day. It doesn't matter if you're having um, lots of business or if, you, or if you're not too busy, especially now with, you know, tough times that we're going through, it's very important to maintain your balance. Yeah, so actually, and that probably is a bit of a segue into my next point because I'm, I'm going to ask, um, and I've got two 10-year-old boys who are twins, um, and uh, so I always like to ask people, um, what's the one piece of advice they would give to their 10-year-old self if they were to give themselves some advice looking back? Um, and, and it might be, might be for you that it's, it's more meditation, but I don't know. What, what would your answer be? <laughs> I would actually introduce meditation a lot earlier than what you think. <laughs> Two things, meditation and music. Yep. Um, you'll be surprised how a meditation for a 10 year old, it's so different. And I actually tried a couple of years ago, I had a boyfriend and he had, um, uh, he had children and the girl was, the girl was nine, the boy was 11. And I used to come to their room sometimes and say, right, guys, let's do some meditation and put some med guided meditation for kids. I've done that probably twice. And on a third night, they come asking for it. Yep, yep. So, yes, I, I would introduce music, a lot more music and um, good music and meditation on my 10-year-old. Well, we... Uh we have in our house, we've got two very shy boys who, if you put them in the public arena, they will hardly open their mouth sometimes. But at home, we, I reckon we have the Bond Trap family. Uh, in, in <laughs> uh, you suddenly hear this launch, launching of singing from the, from the bathroom or somewhere, and then the other one joins in. So <laughs> we've, got the, we've got the singing happening. It's just that no one else will ever hear it. <laughs> but uh, so, no, I agree with Michael. you. Michael. 
Is, is that really true that twins finish their sentences and, may, and maybe they're singing? Um, not for our twins. They tend to interrupt each other. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I think uh, they're identical twins, but they're not identical. So perhaps that stops yeah. that from happening, I think. I'm, 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 I'm guessing that might be the reason why they don't follow that trend. But yeah, no. But the meditation, though, is really good because they actually did, uh, with their soccer program last year, they did yoga. And that was interesting just uh, as part of the, the, the soccer um, club actually organised the yoga, which, again, is a form of being in the present. Uh, as opposed to being thinking about the future or the past. Um, you've got to concentrate on what you're doing. So, yeah, I think that meditation is a really strong one. I think I, I like that as an idea. So, um, moving along, have you ever had to borrow money for your business? And if you have, how have you used the money? Never had to borrow money for my business. Yep, so that's a, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good starting point. So, you've always been able to develop from your own capital base your, your business right. Yes. But have you borrowed money to buy a property? And, and if so, have you, how many properties do you have? Ooh. How, how, <laughs> how, how, big are, how big is your portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> My rain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have borrowed money. Uh, it was my first experience as a homeowner in Australia after... 10 years and I have one property. I have um, an apartment. I'm very happy with that. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so you got your, have you got any plans to expand property from your perspective at this stage or are you looking at just reinvesting in your business or? I do. I want to, I want to expand my portfolio for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. No, I think it, it's really interesting when you look at the stats, uh, and I've quoted this a few times on these uh, uh, just chats that we're having. I, I was actually talking to a fellow person we both know, Roberta, who does set in hypnotherapy centre, and she at one stage had about three or four properties, I think she had, um, investment properties, and I said, you know, you were almost in the top 1% of property owners in Australia. It kind of, it falls away very quickly, put it that way. So, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So where, the next thing is the suburb you live in. What, where, where do you live? And are there some hidden gems about your suburb that you mm. love? I, I believe that every suburb has some hidden gems. I yeah. live in Maribyrnong. Yep. Uh, I was, uh, I'm, I'm actually new to the West. I was living in Kew before and before that in Caulfield. So <laughs> I completely changed. Um, hidden gems. Hmm. I guess there are a few restaurants, especially a, a Thai restaurant around Edgewater. Yep. And it, it's very good. It, it is definitely a hidden gem. And there are a few tracks if you like to walk, if you, you like to go to walk and um, love nature. There are a lot of tracks here around, um, around Maribyrnong River, um, if you go towards Kila East or if you go towards the other side um, on the Maribyrnong River by the Anglers Pub, it's definitely, um, definitely beautiful to go for a walk and it's very calm and, and uh, full of nature. I love it. Actually, another person who I did uh, one of these chats with was um, Mariana Barber, um, growth for training um, business. And she does first aid training, and she lives at um, now. I've got to get the suburb right. Uh, Ascot, no, is it Ascot Vale Heights? Um, have I got the right name? The suburb, um, just on the other side of the Maribyrnong. And I'm yeah, yeah. And uh, and I'm sorry, Mariana, if I got the suburb wrong, <laughs> but because my memory is not that good. Um, but she was talking about the track along the Maribyrnong as well, and I said. And it's kind of funny that you've mentioned it because when the boys were doing their soccer training last year up at Brimbank, I used to run down to the Maribyrnong River uh, track and run along. And I said it's the most beautiful bit of quiet uh, track that you can come across. And she said, don't tell anyone about it. I said, well, <laughs> you and me on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, have... Um 
I just remember two little uh, hidden gems. So when I go for a walk by the river, uh, there's a nursery. I don't know if you ever saw there's a nursery when you cross the bridge. And they actually, it's a lovely place, very relaxing. If you like plants, go inside, have a look. They have not only plants, but they have um, homewares and candles and things like that. But also they have a beautiful cafe upstairs. Oh, is this the one down, is this Pointers? Pointers yeah. Nursery, I think it is. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll give them a plug. I, I haven't been there for a few years, but I, I used to, I, I've, I've been a big customer of theirs in the past where I've bought far too many plants. Uh, <laughs> it's probably why you're not there anymore, going there anymore. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, my garden is now full. Um, but yeah, no, that's a lovely little place, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's very, yeah. very pleasant. A pleasant place, yeah. Yeah, and they're the little things sometimes that people don't see and then when you realise you go there and you've got them, which is a really great cafe slash nursery, and then you've got the uh, the river and the path along the river just below them. It is spectacular. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, Mila, that is so fantastic. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Uh, oh, thank you. Get it all packaged up and then hopefully uh, we'll get to see it out in the social media land, uh, which is another part of the digital strategy. And we'll take it from there. So with that note, I'm going to pause the um, recording. So thanks again for coming. Thank you.